Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I'm gonna to tell you about the top five things that I did wrong when I started using SketchUp. All right, so this is it. This is my opportunity to bear my soul about how flawed I was when I was a new user and how I got things wrong all the time. No longer though, I'm perfect now. No, I'm just kidding. I get things wrong all the time. Uh, but when I started, I really got things wrong. So I didn't appreciate a lot of what SketchUp is, how it's done, how it's made. Um, I try to use it like other software and that's that's just a trouble. I mean, it's not those other 3D modeling softwares you've used or 2D modeling softwares, documentation softwares you've used. It is its own thing. Um, so there's some things on out there that people don't appreciate the 3D view, inferencing. We've gone over all that kind of stuff. These are specific to me. These are the things that I look back at and I'm like, man, if I had jumped on those quicker, I would have been a better SketchUp user, even faster. And uh, those are things I want to jump through with you. So here, are, this is my personal list of five things that I did wrong when I started using SketchUp. Let's go. All right, uh, we're gonna keep this simple because when I started using SketchUp, I modeled very simple things. <laughs> so uh, I modeled ambitious things and got myself in a lot of trouble a lot. Um, so again, like I said, there's, there's some things that I just want to kind of throw out there. A lot of people don't appreciate things like grouping. If you want to isolate geometry, you know, you want to come in here, make it a group. It's going to keep it separate from other geometry. Inferencing. When you go into to draw, watch the colors of the, the lines you're drawing. Is that's going to be inferencing and then getting those snap points as you move around, end points, midpoints, that kind of stuff. Those are things that, that people don't appreciate. Learning how to orbit real quick. That's, that's another one. People get stuck into views and they don't know how to get out of it. Those are simple things. Those are things that, that everybody should learn at the beginning. So I want to go beyond that and talk about the things that I personally realized at some point, had these light bulb moments. The first one is right up here. If I go up to SketchUp on, on a Windows machine, you go to the Windows menu and then go to settings and it's right here, shortcuts. I When I started using SketchUp, I love toolbars. I was on a Windows machine and I went in and turned on every single toolbar docked it all around, shrunk my drawing space a ton to get every tool. Stuff I didn't even use, I turned the toolbar on just to fill the space. It's not bad. I mean, toolbars aren't bad, they're not slow. If I wanna move this circle, I come up here and hit, hit the move command. It's quicker than going up to tools and then coming down and clicking move for sure. But it's not as fast as just tapping the move key, right? So my default is M, I hit M, I'm in move. Getting used to using shortcut keys is a huge time saver to the point that, uh, you know, a lot of times as I'm modeling, I will hit keys without looking, without realizing I'm even doing it. Uh, and it just taught myself to use those shortcuts. And it is so much quicker. It is so much faster to use shortcut keys than to use even toolbars or menus. Plus, if you're not relying on a bunch of toolbars to be on your screen, you get all this real estate for modeling, right? You don't have to sacrifice the top quarter of your screen because you have all these toolbars taking space up. And the nice thing, like I was showing in settings, you can apply a shortcut key to any command, including extensions. So this is a super huge time saver. Don't spend time hunting and clicking on buttons. Don't spend time in drop down menus or extension menus. Find the commands you use a lot and then put shortcuts on them and use them. They're gonna be a huge time saver. Definitely do that. That's the first thing, number one. All right, number two is right over here, entity info. I, I knew what this was. I knew that this was a good thing to have. You know, I knew it existed. I didn't use it though. I got to a point eventually where I had this open all the time. And with it always open, I could always see if I click on something, oh, here's a square footage. I want to toggle that off. Oh, just go ahead and turn it off. Um, I could change certain things. I grab the circle right here. Oh, it's two foot three and something. Well, it's supposed to be two foot even. So I come in here, type two foot, and I could make those changes. Super, super helpful. I can even change colors in here. So this entity info, once I figured this out, it made quality modeling, making sure I'm doing a good job modeling the thing I'm supposed to model as well as making changes much simpler, right? So, I mean, I would spend a lot of time using the eraser and that kind of thing where I could just come in here and toggle things on and off or even lock stuff or just, it was, it's hard to, to 
really express it's because it seems so foundational at this point in my modeling journey to have entity info open and you can double check as you model what's in here so make sure that's up so you shortcut keys entity info my third thing this one's embarrassing you guys for real so if i take this circle and i go grab push pull here's my shortcut key and i pull this up uh, this is a circle it's welded i get this nice smooth thing that happens sometimes as we're modeling stuff breaks right and you end up with this where i'm pulling up not a smooth circle but a 24 segment shape and i get all these faceted pieces now when i started i thought this was broken beyond repair the two things i did not know about one was i could come in and use a modifier key with soft with erase to turn on soft and smooth so right here on a mac it's option i click that and I can just come in and I can smooth that all out. I didn't know I could do that. The other thing I didn't know I could do, if I undo that, I didn't know I could grab this circle, right? These and right click weld edges. Well, at the time when I started using it, weld edges was not native. It was an extension, uh, but I didn't know I could do that. And once that's done, now I can just pull that up and it works the same way. So I didn't know, that's a that's a two for one. I didn't know about soft and smooth. I did not know about welding. But if you know those things, you can go, so I would literally, if I had that happen, I would delete the geometry and recreate it and try push pulling again and hope that it wasn't broken. So that was a big one for me. That likes it. I feel a little silly about not knowing that. And I can't remember since for the last four or five versions, weld has been native, so you didn't have to get an extension. But extensions, now that I mentioned that, this does bring me to my fourth thing that I didn't realize or didn't know about when I started using SketchUp, or I guess I knew about them but didn't take advantage of them, and that is, of course, extensions. So there's a button right in SketchUp, has been for many, many years, where I can jump right to the extension warehouse and I can go find time-saving extensions. Um, this is a double-edged sword, of course. Don't get in here. Don't, don't just start downloading extensions. Don't just grab everything that's up here. Uh, there's a lot of extensions that are pretty heavy. They do some awesome, amazing stuff, but it's not rel if it's not relative to your workflow, it's probably not worth downloading right this second. Um, but if you ever find yourself doing something in modeling or running up against a limitation or repetitively modeling the same way and doing the same thing over and over again, there's a good chance that somebody else has had that issue too and has gone out and made an extension to save you from doing that thing. It can be hard to just wander into Extension Warehouse and not know what you're looking for. So you can do things like use the categories to say, okay, well, I want to look at some, uh, some drawing tools. I'll click on that and just search the whole thing. And here's the drawing tools. That's going to give you a whole lot of stuff. I mean, it's still like, you know, trying to, drink the ocean one sip at a time. There's a lot there. But if you know a specific thing, so I want to, I want a, a bevel tool. I can put that in and then I get a couple of those tools. This is great. If you, if you're still having a hard time, not sure how to, uh, what the right term is to put in here or how to search for stuff, I would suggest checking out our forum, forums.sketchup.com. Go up and talk about the process you're doing and just say, is there any extensions that uh, I should take a look at? We have talked about this before on the videos. I do think that people should, for the most part, get used to modeling using the native tools before they dump a bunch of extensions in. But there's definitely a point where having an extension is going to save you time and looking into and learning about them is definitely an important part as you start to get more and more competent and spend more and more time in SketchUp. All right, so our top four so far, one was shortcut keys, two was using the entity info, Three was the double weld and soften to get, uh, you know, rounded shapes. Four is using extensions. And five, five feels a little bit like a little bit of a cheat because it's not exactly SketchUp. But let me explain how this works. Number five is layout. So from very early on when I used SketchUp, I tried to get something out of it, right? So I would, I, it's great to go in and model something here. But sooner or later, if I'm building something, um, I'm, showing somebody something sooner or later, I want to get something out of here. And I would do basically print screens from SketchUp. 
I would go to an orthogonal top-down view of a, something I had drawn, put draw dimensions on, whatever, that sort of thing, and hit print screen, take that into Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign or something like that to position it and print it out. I jumped through so many hoops before realizing how easy I had it with layout. So layout lets me pull in my model exactly as it is, set an exact scale on it. Um, if you're not using layout already and you're doing any kind of exporting, if you're going to another program, if you're, like I said, screenshotting your model, you're exporting your model and doing something, check out layout. Layout can save you huge amounts of time. And I can set it up with templates to make it very quick and easy. If, if I knew the capabilities of layout that I do now when it first came out, um, I would have saved myself so much time. It's almost painful to think how many screenshots I ended up editing in Photoshop and took into to different programs where I could have just come in here and my needs were so simple. I could have knocked it out and laid out in a few seconds. So that is my fifth thing. Like I said, it's cheating a little bit. It's going outside, but I mean, I was doing it wrong because I was literally coming in here and going, okay, this is ready to go out and doing a screenshot like that. And, and exporting that out or sending that to the printer or something, it was terrible. It was a huge time consuming process and it was never very good looking after I was done. So there you go. Five things that I admit I got wrong. So like I said, there's, there's, there's definitely another group of things where new users don't think about this inside of SketchUp. Like I said, that's making a group, inferencing, uh, learning to orbit, those things, Absolutely. Everybody jumps over those. And if you come from another 3D drawing or CAD package, uh, there's some a handful of things that you, you've programmed your brain to think differently and you've got to let go of to embrace SketchUp for what it is. Um, so maybe that's another video. Let me know if you guys think that would be a good video. But this I wanted to share. These were the five things that I personally, Aaron's things he got wrong when he tried to start losing, using SketchUp. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, if you haven't already, please click like down below and maybe subscribe too. Uh, we create several videos each and every week. In fact, I think we put something out every day, including a live stream on Fridays. And you can be notified about all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, leave us a comment down below. Was there something on your list that you wish you just, just one of these, the head Paul moments uh, where you're like, well, how did I not know that? How did it take me so long to figure that out? Let me know down in the comments. And if you have any ideas, for other videos you think would be good, like you said, like I said, let me know if, if you think that that list of things that new people always overlook is a good idea. Let me know about that in the comments too. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.